Ne a ye Ura Hassan Ayariga and Konkodi and Komo Wano a founder and leader for the APC. Uh he is speaking and speaking in to the effect said uh, John Dramani Mahama is promising a 24-hour economy. But I mean, there's a serious allegation by the Honorable Hassan Ayariga indicating to the entire nation uh, that particular idea has been stolen by John Mahama from his 2020 manifesto. And I presume uh, he will be the right person to explain why this particular thing is coming up. Your Excellency, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning to you. And I'm doing great. How are you doing too? I'm doing well. It's been a long time. Yes, it's been a while because uh, we've been very busy. <laughs> yeah, the last time busy. I saw you was in a video uh, putting together your signpost and then trying to mobilize people to get them out there ahead of 2024 with your new photograph uh, indicating yeah. that the APC is very much ready to contest in 2024 how far with those processes and with your congress as well if there is any election at all so far we are in certain regions we are done with greater accra we are done with upper east mm. we are in uh, we are moving to ashanti and northern so the team is currently will start ashanti this morning and uh, some have already started in the northern part of ghana you know the country is big and wide Mm. So you need to get every corner because we are trying to make sure that every pool has the poster of Hassan Ayariga. So I see. So, so they are spreading the, the signage and all of that? Everywhere. Everywhere. You see, visibility is more important in Ghana here. This time around, uh, the media are not giving us equal platform when it comes to anything. <laughs> so we have to give ourselves that yes, platform. Excellency. The media is yeah. not giving you enough platform, you think so? No, 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 no. The media is not giving us enough platform. That's a fact. The fact is that media will concentrate on uh, John Mahama and Baumia. I but see. Even when they don't have the policies, you people keep following them. When they don't have the vision, you keep following them. Is it, isn't, it, have, isn't it the fact it, that we are not you are, we are not really hearing more from your no, camp? Or better so, you, you I, I beg your pardon. Or just the fact that the APC probably is not uh, organizing a lot of the uh, events that will attract the media's attention. We are doing a lot of events. But the point here is that you people don't listen. Are you, are you getting you don't you only listening. interested you're only interested in uh what do you call it uh uh interested in nanado or john mahama so even when we call you for interviews and then we give you policies you will leave it and go and con talk about what john mahama and akufado have said because why those media houses largely are owned by these two political parties so the, both sides are giving priority and uh, audience to their TV, their, their, their clients, their TV owners. So if Asaraga was, maybe look at, for instance, uh, uh, this young man called Goom. He has a 24-hour TV. Uh, TV mm. He sits there every day and he's talking and talking and talking. So people are listening to him. But if Asaraga says something, which is very important, because I don't have a TV station or a radio station, I have to use social media. And that's why you're asking me. It's a long time. If you had called me like you did today, every day you hear a policy. Yes, but, 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 but Your Excellency, for, for, for instance, we have given you or granted you the audience this morning, and it's as a result of what you said uh, about John Muhammad's 24-hour idea. So the fact, still re yes, the fact still remains that if you are creating the news, then the media will still come to you. I mean, if the APC is organizing elections from the constituency level to the national level, trying to put your people together, reorganize them for 2024. We are doing that right. The, the media will definitely give you the coverage you deserve. We are doing that at the police stations. Mm. Look, let me be very honest with you. I didn't want to say this, but I will say it. Okay. Why do you have two, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, panelists in every radio and TV station every morning? Why? When we have more political parties, why do you only entertain NDs and MPP? APC, we wrote to all your stations. Telling you that we want to bring our representatives to us. But your producers always tell us that it is only for NDC and MPP. So if you sell a commodity that is not even good, people will buy. But the point here is that if your commodity is good and it's not sent to the market, nobody will buy. Nobody will buy.
Because the commodity, APC commodity, is the best commodity. But because it's not on the market, it becomes difficult to sell. So we have to sell ourselves on our own wage. And that is why you yourself, you are admitting to the fact that you have seen posters across Ghana. So why do you think I will spend millions of dollars? It's, it's millions of dollars. You don't even see it. Each poster is costing me to put on the wall 200 Ghana mm. Or Yes, so you can imagine that if you count 10 of them, how much is that? I but that I could have used to pay a TV station. But I said, no, I will do what every Ghanaian will see. Even if you don't have a TV station, you will see it. If you don't have a radio, you will see it. These are things I am doing in... Can you imagine if Greater Accra alone will put about 600,000 of it? Interesting. That's a lot. Even if it's 10 cities, let's even reduce it to 20 cities per one. 600,000 of it multiplied by 20 Ghana cities. How much is that? That's a huge sum of money. Thank you. So we are doing what we are supposed to do to make the party visible and attractive. Because this year, 2024 year election, it's not about NDC or MPP. We have gone past the stage where we are going to be talking about NDC and MPP. Hmm. For 32 years, we've given them power. For 32 years, they've mismanaged our economy. I can understand they don't have ideas. Very well. Then, yes, Alex, I, think, I, mm, I think that the differentials are clear because I, I presume my producers called you this morning. And so you have my word. Uh, we will be coming to APC. And for us, uh, if you have your members ready to speak to us on this network, we are ever willing to, to as well grant you the opportunity. But substanti yes, substantially, you said John Mahama has stolen an idea from you, uh, which is quite uh, a very important allegation to make. Uh, for the fact of you saying that John Mohammed's 24-hour economy idea uh, was actually stolen from your 2020 manifesto. Yes. He has adapted my 2020 manifesto of the 24-hour production. And he himself finds it very difficult to explain what a 24-hour economy is. That is why... The former press, uh, the, the vice president is able to come out and ridicule him because his mama is not explaining the thing the way it's supposed to be. You see, when you adapt a policy of somebody, you need to ask. It's just like what happened in the MPP that they took the independent prosecutor from my party and they could not adapt it so well to as well. It is not a special prosecutor. It's supposed to be an independent special prosecutor, and that is why the special prosecutor is not up and doing. Mm. Because they just pick, they pick them from me, but they don't ask me to explain to them. So John Mahama picked 24 hour economy or 24 hour production. It's actually going to be 24 hour production. It is not just economy, 24 hour production. You see, when you talk about a 24 hour production, what it means is that the country is going to be working 24 hours. And I said 24 hour, if you read that manifesto there, it's stated 24-hour production, three-shift system. Three is stated categorical into bracket. Three-shift system for companies, businesses, and workers. So what it means is that Ghana is going to be divided into three groups of workers, category. So we have eight hours in the morning. Mm. Those who go for eight hours in the morning, those who go for eight hours in the afternoon, and those who go eight hours in the evening. That now makes it a three-shift system. So if you put eight, eight hours into three, you get 24. So the system says that three-shift system. So what it means, we are going to be running the country 24 hours. Currently, what we are doing is running a one-shift system. People go in the morning, and some few companies... Of, and no, not compared to some few institutions like hospitals and other crew, they run a little more than the eight hours. So in the night, you will see that in the hospital, they put some three people to be waiting in, in terms of emergency and others. No, 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 no. When we begin to run the 24-hour economy, we are going to be a productive nation. We are going to, we are going to increase productivity, increase manufacturing, and increase industrialization systems, methods. We are going to be running, increasing our production level to the level that every hour of the, the, the 24 hour is going to be productive. 
Every now, second. Now, Your Excellency, how productive can that be? Because people have already criticized such an idea. But I'm a little bit curious because, uh, as you claim, you are the originator of the idea. Now, what do you make of people telling you that we need to segregate uh, certain sectors of the economy? Other than that, especially in the public sector, you cannot run a 24 hour economy. I mean, they question the fact that on, what will be public me. workers be doing at that time of the night? The public workers will be working when everybody is working. Ghana will not sleep. Ghana, Ghana's workers will be divided into three shifts. What it means is that every department will now run a 24-hour activity. So that if, for instance, the company called ABC Company, they are into producti production of bottles or production of water. Those who come in the morning, so if they have ten, uh, nine workers, mm -hmm. three workers will come in the morning and do the production. Three workers will come in the afternoon and continue with the production. Three workers will come in the evening and continue. Because every sector of the economy will now be running 24 hours. So every sector will need something to survive within the 24 hours. Is it, isn't it that is, just a mere division of labor? It is, not, it is not a mere division of labor. Let me explain to you so that you understand. Why do you think that we are a dependent nation? It's because we are, we are actually because we have no idea, because we have no vision, because we have no policy, because we don't think beyond the box. So we depend only on an eight-hour economy to run 16 hours sleeping. We sleep for 16 hours, and we work for 8 hours. A country cannot sleep more than it works and become a productive nation. A country must work more than it sleeps in order to be able to meet the demand of it, the world. We are in a country where we have to produce to be able to fit into the society, to be able to fit into the, the world systems. But what do we do? We are importing every day. We are not producing. We have become a, a, a begging nation. We beg every day for survival. We don't have enough food to, 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 to consume. We don't have food security. We don't have enough to export. And we call ourselves a country. If, you, if we are working 24 hours, we'll be able to do all that that I'm talking about. Mm. The country will become active. Working 24 hours means increasing of productivity. It means that you are going to increase your productive, your production level. And when you increase your production level, what it means is that you move to the second stage of productivity, which is manufacturing. You increase your manufacturing level. Then you become an industrial country, where now the world will depend on you for certain things. Today, the world doesn't depend on Ghana for anything. Nothing. We are out of the box when it comes to talking about the world. Mm. But we have what it takes. To be part at the top of the world, we have diamond, bauxite, gold, manganese, oil, timber, and all that minerals that you can think of in the world. Yet, our economy sleeps more than it works. Go to Germany. They work 24 hours. Europe, all the countries in Europe are working 24 hours. That is why when you have a friend in Europe, he will tell you that, oh, tell me, he two jobs. So. What is the meaning of the two jobs? What it means is that he has... One work in the morning and sleeps in the afternoon and one work in the evening. V very well. So, but, 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 Your Excellency, what will be the starting point? Because I have engaged other women in Ghanaians on this same uh, policy and how it should be uh, propelled. Now, the question they tell you is the fact that you do not have the required factories that will enable uh, people to work during the night. Again, factories, they factories, factories. Yes, I, I'm coming. Just, just, just a minute. They, they tell you again yeah. that such a policy can be implemented only in the private sector. With our current circumstance, we cannot have the entire country run a 24-hour system without any job for workers to do. Virtually, you will be paying monies for no job done to workers in this country. Nobody, no, first of all, nobody pays salary or wages to somebody who has not worked. Secondly, when there's a lot of productivity, it will increase wage levels. Number three, when people tell you that we cannot start an economy, it's because they have lack of vision. They don't understand the 24 hours. The more reason I'm asking you, where, where is the I'm, 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 I'm yes. explaining, I'm coming to it. Mm. I'm coming to it. They don't, they don't understand what it means to talk about 24 hour economy. Look, we spend $1.2 billion every year importing rice. 
700 million dollars importing oil, over 800 million dollars importing fish. I can continue cutting. We spend a lot of money importing all these diapers, pampers, tea rules, everything that you can think of. We spend huge sums of money. Let's close our border. This is how we begin. We we'll close our border. No more importation of all these items that we are talking about. Ghana, we have the raw materials. We export crude. We export raw materials, a few raw materials. Some of them, we don't even produce them enough to export. So we are now going to turn our country into a production hub. That's the beginning of it. Farmers, the students who are in school now, we will now segregate some of them to become serious farmers to be able to produce. We, we segregate some of them to become productive in their field of study. So everything that we import, we are going to stop importing it and start producing. All the things that we import in this country, we can produce it. It's because we have no vision. That's why we are importing. So think about rice. We engage farmers. We engage the youth to do research. We engage many people to do cross-breeding. Think about oil. We have shea butter. We have soya bean. We have coconut. We have a whole lot. We can begin to do production of oil. Every other thing that we import can be produced in this country. Mm. So we must begin to close the borders to assume that there is no anybody outside Ghana. Only Ghanaians are the people living in the world. How do we survive? Very well. that, 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 that is where I was going. The critical thinking aspect of what you just mentioned. Yes. Now, this will require a lot of critical decisions to be made. Now, substantially, we are unable to produce enough within our own country. For that reason, we do a lot of importation. If you are to take such measures, for instance, with example you make of rice, uh, should there be a government that says that in the next one year, I'm closing my borders... And there is going to be a ban on the importation of rice. The question so is we, that how are we going to survive we as a state? Our, we, we change our consumption pattern to other things that we produce. Coconut, uh, cocoa yam, yam, potatoes, plantain, and all that. We have to, you see, we have to sacrifice. Do we have them in those capacities to no, feed the entire we, country? Is, they get working in the, on the farmland. Go to the farmers and ask them. I, have, I just came from Ashanti region. Go and see. The farmers are suffering because there are no even roots to bring their produce out of the, the town. The farmers are suffering because there's no ready market for their produce. We have begun, to, we have adapted a life that is not our lifestyle. And then increasing importation of those items that we consume. Mm. And rather rejecting what we have, uh, we, naturally what God has given us. Look at the number of yams that get spoiled in the market when you go to the market square. Those that get spoiled at the farmland. Why can't we begin to change our consumption pattern in order to increase our productivity and start doing something for our country and exporting it? Why do we have to import rice from other countries? How did they get there? They did not just start farming within one week and it came on. They made priority decisions. They, they had to make serious sacrifice in order to get there. And we as Ghanaians, we lack we, we have to sacrifice to build our country, but we like to build other people's country. Let me give you some example. The best worker in the world is a Ghanaian living abroad. And the worst worker in the world is a Ghanaian living in Ghana. You understand? So we have to change the way we do things. We cannot continue to do the same way and expect results. No. We cannot just continue to keep the same leaders and expect and expect new results. Mm. We have to change the leaders we have and bring in different crop of leaders and see how these leaders can transform our country. We cannot be, we cannot be uh, adapting old methods of living our life. No. The world is reviving, uh, revolving and moving very, 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 very fast. And mm. Ghana, what do we do? We are sleeping all the time with so many excuses instead of building the country with ideas and policy. We always have an excuse not to do something. Mm. Yes, Alexi, this is indeed very deep. And then in the coming weeks, uh, I'll plead with you. We will come and visit you to actually engage you more on this. I mean, it will be a good time to expand the discussion and see the way forward. So for you, this is the starting point, And that is what you think John Mahama is getting it all wrong. Yes. 
Nama is getting it wrong. Baumia is getting it wrong. Baumia is rebuttaling Muhammad saying that uh, some, some states are doing 24 hours. No, there is no institution in Ghana that is working full capacity 24 hours. You shouldn't forget, we are talking about full capacity 24 hours. Very well. All right. I'm very grateful, Your Excellency, for this morning. We'll speak to you again uh, after you this, much. and then we'll come visit you and engage you more on this. I'm grateful I'm for, your for your time. Very Bye -bye. well. And to Ura Hassan Ayariga and Yenino Eddie M. Kobono, and I propose you S3. Bring it as you 38 after 8.